Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to create a virtual keyboard based on artificial intelligence. We will write the code step by step so it is easy to follow. We will also look at how we can run this program to operate applications like a notepad. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, then do check out our premium courses that are now available in packs. The link will be in the description. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in our PyCharm project and we have created a new one called AI Keyboard Project. And we only have a single file at this point. So we can delete all of this and write everything here. Now we need to install the packages. So we will go to settings and the project interpreter and we are going to add CVZone. So CVZone will install the OpenCV package along with the NumPy. So you don't have to worry about those, but it does not come with the media pipe installation. Media pipe, which is the back end of our hand tracking and detection module. So we need to install that as well. And again, this is provided by Google. So we will wait for them to finish installing and then we will start writing the code. So now that the installations are done, we are going to import CV2, which is our OpenCV library, and we are going to create a video capture object. So we will write CV2.VideoCapture, and we are going to give it ID number zero. So that's the webcam ID. Now, normally uh, we keep it default in terms of size, but this time around we are going to increase the size because we need more room for the keyboard keys. We have lots of them. So what we will do is we will write cap.set and number three is uh, the width. The prop ID number three is width and then the value for it, we are going to give 1280. And then we will write cap.set and the value for height is four and um, the prop ID is four and the value will be 720. So we are using HD resolution rather than VGA. Okay, once that is done, we are going to write here while true and then we are going to write success and image is equals to cap.read and we are going to write cv2.im show and image and img and cv2.wait key and we will give it a one millisecond delay. So this is kind of a boilerplate for running webcam, so we don't have to worry too much about this. Um, let's let's test it before we move any further. And there you go. So you can see me here. Hi there. <laughs> and uh, the webcam is working fine, so we should be good to go. So now the first thing we have to do is to track our hand. So we will write here from cv zone from cv zone dot hand tracking module import hand detector so we are using the hand detector from the Z cv zone package which relies on the media pipe library so what we will do is we will uh, create a hand detector so we'll write here detector is equals to hand detector and we will give in the detection confidence as 0.8. By default, it's 0.5, but we want to be accurate because we don't want to randomly press any keys. So we will give it a little bit higher uh, probability. Okay, so uh, now what we can do is we can go to our loop and in the loop, we are going to write two statements, two lines. Uh, the first one will be to find the hands and the second one will be to find the landmark points within those hands. So we are going to write here image is equals to the, the function will turn us an image. So we will write here detector dot find hands and we are just going to send in the image. And we also need the landmark. So we will write here LM list uh, is and we also have one parameter which is the 
bounding box, I believe, bounding box info. Detector dots find position. So this will find the positions for us and we will write here image as well. So that is all it needs. So if we run this now, it should be able to detect my hands and we should have all the landmark points that we can use later on to see whether we are clicking or we are pressing a key or not. So there you go. So these are the hand detection. So you can see here we can detect. So this is basically the idea. And then once we have this, we have the basis of how we are going to detect um, what do you call the presses. But we need to have buttons to actually find these locations and to know where to press and what key to uh, generate or what key to simulate. Now, there are two methods of doing this. The first one is to just take an image and we manually find where are the X and Y positions of each of these keys and we tell our program to check for those locations and see if our finger is around that location, then you detect it as a click. Now, the problem with this method is that if you try to scale the image or if you try to change the image completely, then you will have to manually do all of the work again. So you will have to find the X and Y coordinates of each of these keys again and again, which will be very, uh, a very hardcore method of uh, doing this. So what we will do instead is we are going to create our rectangles through the OpenCV function and we are going to put some text inside of it and we will create it uh, as a button. Now you could use some other libraries to create these buttons but we are going to keep it simple. We are going to use OpenCV uh, as default. So uh, to create a button what we will do is we will simply write cv2.rectangle and within our rectangle, we are going to give in our image. We are going to give in a starting point. So I'm just randomly putting values. There is no logic behind this, um, at least at this point. So we will write this and then we will write the color. So I like to write down purple and then the thickness we want it filled. So we will write here cv2 dot filled. So that should give us one rectangle. So, and should we put, yeah, let's put some text on it as well. CV2 dot put text and we will put it on our image. Uh, the, the text, let's say the first key, which is Q. So you want to put that. And then the origin, because we are using a hundred and hundred as the origin and 200 and 200 as the ending point, we want it to be in the middle. So, let's let's say 140 and 140 something like that and then we will write uh, what is the next thing the font cv2 dot font we will put a random font scale let's put it as five maybe then color we want it to be completely white so we can easily uh, read so we will write 255 did i put extra brackets yes to remove those extra brackets and then we need I believe the scale or no, the thickness so let's put the thickness as 5 as well so you can bring this down so let's run this and hopefully it will give us our first button uh, although it's just a drawing but uh, we are going to we are going to program it as if it is a button so yeah so Maybe it's not good enough. Uh, 140, let's put it at 180 or 160. And this one was fine, I believe. 140, maybe 130. Let's try that again. So yeah, it's it's better. We need to bring it down a bit more. So, uh, and a little bit towards the back as well. So maybe 115. 
and then 180. Let's try that. Okay, so yeah, that's much better. We can push it a little bit further as well. But I, be, I believe you get the idea of uh, what we are trying to do. Now, this is all good, but the thing is we need to replicate this several times. So, for example, in our keyboard, we are going to use 30 keys for the alphabets. So, we need to replicate that. So, what we need to do is we need to put this in a list. Now, each of these buttons, it has an attribute. Uh, it doesn't have a attribute. It has many attributes. For example, it has the name, let's say the text. It has the location and it has also the size. So here you have the initial location and then you have the size. So you can have different sizes as well. So these attributes, they will be a little bit hard to manage with lists. So what we can do instead is we can create a class and from that class, we can create these 30 buttons. So that will make it very easy for us to replicate. Uh, or the other way is doing with it uh, lists, but as I mentioned, it is better to do it with the class. So for the class, it's it's not very difficult. All we have to do is we have to write class, class, and we will write button, and then we will have um, initialization method, and inside that we want the user to input position, text. And size so the size we can give it by default like uh, let's say 100 by 100 that we used earlier but the rest of the things they will vary quite a bit so we have to change so we will write here self dot position is equals to position if you're not familiar with object oriented programming I highly recommend that you go and read about it a little bit before you try this uh, because it will be confusing if you don't know what this means. So we will write here size and size and self dot text is equals to text. So each of these buttons will now have these three attributes. And then what we can do is we can just take this whole part and we can put it in here. Or we can we can create a new method as well uh, just for drawing. So for example, we can write here, we can write here def draw and then we can, we can call this method whenever we want to draw. Now I will tell you what is the advantage and disadvantage of doing each, uh, of using each of these methods. So let's just first do this. So now whenever I want to create a button, all I have to do is I have to write here uh, my button, my button is equals to button and then I have to give in the parameters so the position the position parameter for example we we will put 100 by 100 but we are giving it as a list and then we have the text so let's say this is Q and then we have the size we don't want to give that because it's already there so uh, then what we have to do is we have to replace these values. So right now they are static. We need to make it dynamic. So we will take this position. We will write self position. So we will put it here. And then we will write self dot size. We will put it here. And then this is the location, uh, the initial. So again, we have to give in the position. So we will write here self position, but this time we need to give it some distance. So we have to use the first element plus something. So for example, uh, let's say plus 25. And then we have to give in the second one, which is again self dot position. And this is, will be the second element. And we will say, for example, plus um, I don't know, 25, 30 again. So that's basically the idea. Seems to be that there is some error. Um, yeah, there's, 
There's not supposed to be a bracket here. Okay, so that is good. Do we need to change anything else? Yes, this Q, this should be self dot text. So if, if you don't understand why we are doing this and what's the reason behind it, you will see that very, very shortly. So this is for one button now. Okay, so if I do this, if I call this function, uh, sorry, if I create this object, then it should draw, it should put all the attributes and we should have it on our image. So let's see. Uh, we don't have it on our image. It says Q. Uh, why don't we have it on our image? Oh yeah, because we are not inputting any image. We need to output the image as well. Then we have to input. So th this is the problem with uh, using it with initialization. With initialization, you should only give the initial attributes. Okay, so this part here, we should run only once because the attributes, they are not changing. Uh, if if the button position was, let's say, 100, 100, uh, the, and the text was Q, then it will remain that for the entire program. It will not change. But the thing is, with the drawing, we have to keep drawing again and again because every time every iteration we are getting a new image so it is not the previous image it is a new image coming from the webcam and then we have to draw on that again and again if it was just an im read without any loop then we would not have to do it again and again even with the loop we will not have to uh, draw again and again because the image is not changing we just imported it from a folder and it keeps constant but here because the webcam will have new images every iteration, we need to draw it every iteration. So here we need to put this in a different, uh, what do you call, method. So we will write here draw. And for the draw, we are going to ask for an image. And then once we draw it, we are going to return that image. I hope that makes sense. So we are doing this because this will run only one time before the loop so here for example i will write this my button is this i will initialize it but after that we need to remove the indentation okay and after that now i can call this method during my loop so i can write here my button my button why is it not showing up my button Dot. Is it the indentation? Yes. Uh, something is wrong here. Okay, now it's fine. Uh, my button dot draw and I will send in the image and I will receive back the image. So that is good. So if I run this now, it should uh, do the exact same thing. Uh, apart from the values, I think we change the values a little bit. So the position might be different. Okay, it's not showing the rectangle for some reason. We need to check why. So maybe these values are not right. Position, what is the position? 100 and 100. Hmm, something is wrong here. Okay, I think I know the problem. The problem is that this size is not actually size. Let me try that. If my theory is right, there should be a weird line. Yeah, there is the weird line. Okay. <laughs> so what is happening is that this is actually not, we are thinking of it as the size, but this is not actually taking the size this uh, method or the function it actually wants the absolute value so this is x1 y1 and this is x2 y2 it is not the width and height here we are giving it as width and height so what we need to do is we need to write something down here uh, what we can do is we can write here x and y is equals to self dot position 
And then we can write here that our width and height is equals to self dot uh, size. And now we can write it here easily. We can put here that x plus our width and uh, y plus our height. So that is the issue. So let's run that. And there you go. So now we have our image uh, and the rectangle, but again, it's not in the right position. So we need to push down the Q. So I believe it's, uh, and this we can replace now with width and heights. No, with X and Y. So this should be X and this should be Y. So I think X was fine maybe and uh, maybe the the height was not good. The height, let's put it um, 75, let's say, plus 75. And uh, we can make it a little bit smaller because I think the rectangle is way too big right at this point. Oh yeah, it's perfect. Uh, the location is perfect at this point, but I think the rectangle is a little bit big. So let's make it 85 by 85. So let's try that. But again, we'll have to change these values. Let's just change them a little bit. Uh, instead of 25, let's make it 20. And 75, let's make it 50. Yeah. Um, I think a little bit less in the X and a little bit more in the Y. So this is 20. So let's make it 15 maybe or 10. And this one is 50. Let's let's keep it 75. Or, or let's make it 65. Perfect. Um, but it is a little bit big, to be honest, the text itself. So instead of five, why don't we put it as the scale as, let's say, two and the thickness, let's say, as three. Then we will have to change these again. Uh, maybe 25 and maybe 60. Let's try that. Okay, so that is really small. Mm, let's change it a little bit. So let's put it at four and four. So again, we can keep playing with these parameters all day long, but uh, I think we have spent enough time on this. We need to move on. So if you want, you can play around with these values a bit more. Okay, uh, it's a little bit annoying. Maybe a little bit back and a little bit down. A little bit. Uh, 20 and 65. Okay, I'm not going to change after this. <laughs> Spend a lot of time already. Okay, so let's just have a look at that and then we'll move on. Yeah, I think now it's perfect. It looks clear and loud so now the next thing is that now that we have this what we can do is we can create another one of these then another one and we can just keep changing the location of it so for example this one let's put it at 300 this one let's put it at 400 and we will call it my button one my button two this one should be w this one should be e so we are following the keyboard layout so we can do that and let's see how it looks like. Oh no, we didn't draw, my bad. So we need to draw here. So, 
so we can do that so this will be button one then button two and there you go so now we have our uh, buttons again we can play with the the dimensions and the distance but that's bas the basic idea but the problem here is that we are sending in the image then we are uh, we are sending in the image then we are receiving it back then we are sending again then we are receiving back so this is why i don't like to put it here so i don't like to put the draw function in the button what we can do is we can create another method uh, another function not in the class outside that basically handles the drawing of all the buttons so we can do that and the other thing is that instead of writing it one by one what we should do is we should create a list so for example I will call this uh, button list button list is equals to empty and then for each button I am going to uh, put that in the list so I will write here button list dot append and then I will append it with this and I'm going to loop it now the loop will depend on how many buttons you need so for example I can write for x in range uh, 0 to 10 or let's let's put 5 to be uh, easier to test okay so once I have done that what I can do is I can change the location here so instead of uh, 100 I can write x x multiplied by 100 so it will keep going further and I can give a little bit of cap as well so I can say plus let's say 50 the height will be the same for each one of these and for now we will keep the name same for all of them so let's run that okay so we are getting an error which is my button dot draw okay so because we remove that we need to comment this and what this will do is my button dot append button it will create this button but it will not show us anything so what can we do uh, let's just remove that we are going to create a draw function later on that will draw all of them together but for now let's just open this up and it will draw it during the initialization so that we can see what is happening so let's run it again uh, but it will not do the oh, okay come on it will not do it because it's not in the loop so let's just put it in the loop again we should not put this in the loop because uh, the, the we have starting it uh, information that does not need to be repeated again and again but just for the testing purpose, we are going to put it in the loop because we want to draw it again and again on our image. There you go. So right now it is working because uh, we are creating five of these within our loop. And if I wanted more, I would simply write here, let's say eight, and it will produce eight of these. So this is how simple it is. All we have to do is we have to get our class ready and now you can see we have eight of these uh, in a row. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that all of these are different uh, alphabets. So how can we make sure of that? To do this, we are going to create a list. And we are going to call it, let's say, the keys. Keys is equals to, we will have let's say q then we will have w then we will have e and so on so i will write down all of these and then we will continue so i have written down all of these uh, the idea is that each of these line is a different list so this is list number one then this is list number two this is list number three so now what we can do is we can simply say for x in range or we can simply say for key in keys at 0 
So we are talking about the first key, uh, the first list, which is this. So it will take each of these one by one and it will create a button out of this. So let's see how that will work. So we will write here key in keys. All we have to do is we have to write here key. And we also need the iteration number because we have to use the value of X. So we will write here X and then we will enumerate it. There you go. So if we run this now, now it should have all these different names, uh, all these different alphabets. So there you go. So we have Q, W, E, R, T, Y, U, I, O, P. Uh, I think there are two more or is this? Yeah, this is 10. So that this is what we need. And now we need uh, separate rows. So we need to go to the row number two and the row number three. So how can we do that? We need to put another loop over here. And we are going to say for, uh, let's say J or let's say I in keys, we are going to uh, loop this for I in keys. We are going to loop it and instead of zero, we are going to put the value of I. So we can put here I and let's make this J just to keep with the convention. There you go. So now it should do for all of these. And but the thing is, we are not changing the height. So we need to change the height every time. So we will multiply this with our I. And again, we will give it a little bit of height extra height in the beginning. So let's say 50. So let's run that. And this should give us our complete keyboard layout. Not complete, but uh, at least for the alphabets. And that is what we are going to focus on today. Uh, what happened? Must be integer or slices, not list. Okay, my bad. So we don't need to give an I here. We just need to give I, that's it. Uh, but then we will not have the number. Mm, okay, let's do one thing. We will keep it like this and we will say for I in range of length of keys. I think that will be more appropriate for this instance. Let's run that. There you go. So now we have the complete layout, Q, W, E, R, T, Y, it looks amazing. So we have all these keys now, uh, and it is drawing as well. But again, we are doing all of this within the loop, which is not a very good idea because uh, this information is repeated again and again without any reason. Uh, we understand that we have to draw again and again, but we don't need to repeat this part again and again. So. To draw, we are going to create a new function. We will call it draw all. And we want, uh, what do we want? We want the image that we want to draw on. And then we need the button list. So once we have the button list, we can loop through it and then we can draw each one of these. So that's pretty much it. And then this part here, we will not have to do in the loop. We can do it outside the loop. There you go. So now it's outside the loop and we don't have to repeat it again and again during this. What we will repeat is the draw all. So uh, this is all good. Everything is fine here. We don't need to change anything. But instead of drawing here, we are going to draw over here. So now the question is, where is the position? Where is the size and all of these parameters? And we have to get it from the button list. So we will write here for, for button in button list. We are going to do all of that. And all we have to do is instead of self, we will write button. So the position of this button, the position of this size, uh, not the position of the size, the size of the button. 
okay and then we will put a button here and a button here so again all these in all this information is already stored in each of these buttons because it is a object based on this class so that should work by default so all we have to do now is write this within our loop and we will write here draw all and then where is the button list the button list is here so we already have that and uh, do we need to return yes we need to return our image so we will write here return image so after drawing just return it and we are going to get it back over here and that will replace it and show it here so we can remove this part and let's run that there you go so the weird thing is nothing changed and that's a good thing because it means everything is working fine so that's good and uh, yeah, so this is basically the idea. Now, what we need to do next is we need to check whether we are uh, using our finger, are we close to this, what do you call, any of these buttons or not. So now is the interesting part. So what we will do is, first of all, we are going to check whether we have uh, a hand or not. Because if we don't have a hand, we cannot do all this processing. So we will check if lm list, if there is something in the lm list, then we are going to do all of this. So we need to loop through all the buttons. So we are going to write here for button in button list. And then we are going to write here the x and y and the width and height. Because we need to know the location of each button and then we will check whether our finger is in that range or not. So we will write here X, Y, and that will be our button uh, position, dot position, and then width and height, that will be our button dot size. So that's basically the idea. And then now we can use this information to check whether our finger is in between or not but what is the finger our finger our tip of the finger is basically uh, point number eight now you might say what exactly is point number eight uh, that is a very weird thing to say that it is just point number eight so what we will do is we will go to media pipe and over there we are going to look at what are they showing so this is the media pipe website and if we go down, this is our point number eight. So this is the index finger and the landmark eight is what we are going to track. And later on to detect the click, we are going to check landmark 12. So this is basically the idea. So how can we get that? We can get it by writing LM list at eight. And what will we get? We will get two things, the X and the Y position. So we need the x, so we will write 0. So this is basically the value of the x of our uh, fingertip. So we need to check if the x is in between the x, uh, not the x is in between, this point is in between our x and x plus width. So if it's in between, it means it is in the correct range okay so if that is the case uh, what should we do we can change uh, we can change the color of our button so let's just copy that and we are going to paste it here by the way I was thinking maybe we can we can make we can put draw all and this together because it is a loop again and it is pretty much the same thing um, instead of writing a function here um, but again we, we can we can think of uh, different ways this might not be the best way to do it but again we can optimize it later on as well anyway so we can change the color of this we can make it green so if it is in that range we will make it green and we will keep the text white so we don't need to change anything because 
the button position it's already getting the x and y we already have so everything should work by default so there is uh, our keys and then you can see here each of these turns on if the x is correct we didn't do anything of the y so the y is this position so whenever i go wherever i go you can see the x lights up so whether i'm here or here it doesn't matter right now it's only checking the x so now we need to add the y because then only it will make proper sense so we will write here and the y is in between uh, the the value is in between y and y plus height so what is the value it is the lm list at 8 and oh 8 and 1 so this is basically the y so if we run this now now it should detect at the correct point okay so let's try it there you go b g h j k l it looks it, it feels good i don't know uh especially if you uh if you add some sound effects at the back that will be really really good so anyways so this is basically the idea now that we have the location and we know when we are on it we need to find if we clicked we don't want just to uh, press the button if we are there we want it to click uh, and how can we do that we can do it by checking the distance between number 8 and number 12 we will say that if the distance between these two points is very small then it means it is a click and if the distance is far apart then it means it's not a click so we have a very easy function for this and that function thankfully is in the cv zone package so all we have to do is we have to write detector dot find distance and you only need to give in the value of uh, the index of the point not even the point itself you just have to give the index so i want to find the distance between point 8 and point 12 and that's it and i wanted to draw it on our image uh, and then we can get the length back there are other two parameters we are going to ignore those that's why we are writing it like this uh, when you want to ignore something in python you can write it with an underscore uh, why is it not fixing okay there you go so this l is basically the length so what we can do is we can print the length so it will only print when we are in that range so let's run that so looking at this print value we can determine when should be accepted as a click so there we have it so if i go in you can see now th there is a weird drawing and you can see it is showing the distance there you go and if i go here it is showing the distance so what we need to do is we need to it's not scrolling properly we need to look at the value so right now it should not click at this point it should click so it is around 27 so uh, again you need to fix the distance as well you cannot be too far uh, close and too far apart it cannot be like that you have to fix a distance and i i'm not going to add it now but later on you can do that by checking the area of this bounding box so if the area is far apart don't accept it if the area is too big don't accept it uh, in the middle you can accept so you can do that later by yourself so here i'm going to accept this this is the end of my table so this is my indication so i will keep this as lower than lower than 30 i believe yeah i'm going to say lower than 30. so where is it yeah so I'm going to write here, if L is less than 30, then we are going to do something. And uh, in this case, um, I was thinking maybe we can change the color again. So what we can do is, for this one, we can, instead of green, 
we can uh, let's just copy the whole thing again we can do it in a better way of drawing as well i'm repeating the code again and again so there's definitely better ways to do this but this is quite easy and straightforward so here we are going to write um let's say 175 and 0 and 175 so it is a darker purple and here we are going to keep it green so when it clicks then it becomes green i think that will be better to see and i don't want to see those line uh, the distance of the line so that's just weird so we will write draw is equals to false so if i run this now so let's test it out so right now it's dark and then it becomes green when i click it it becomes green so it is green dark green and if i move around with one finger it will just show it as dark and then if i click and there you go and it's working really nicely again you can improve it by changing some parameters here and there but this is the basic idea that you can move it around and you can do that okay so once it clicks what exactly do we want to do so what we will do is um we can use we can just put the text on the screen or we can send it to a program or we can actually simulate a real keyboard press i will i will show you all of these how we can do that so the first one let's just put a text so what we will do is we will put here a text let's copy both of these and where is it so we will align it with this if i think it might be wrong yeah it's fine okay so what we will do is we are going to give in a value of a rectangle let's say it starts at uh, 50 50 and then uh, it goes to 350 let's say and then it ends at uh, let's say 700 and let's say 450 so uh, this is like a placeholder or a strip to actually write our text and on that strip we are going to write some text so we will call it final text and we are going to declare it right at the top uh, let's just declare it here and we will keep it empty for the beginning so we are going to always display this text even if it's empty and we need to give it a appropriate place so this is 50 we can make this 60 and then the height let's make it uh, 400 425 let's say okay so that should be fine let's make it a little bit bigger so we can see properly and uh, yeah let's keep it white and let's change the color of this it is dark purple actually it might be good to keep dark purple so yeah so now this will give us the text always but the text right now is empty so whenever we click this is uh when not hen <laughs> when clicked okay so whenever it clicks then we are going to update final text we are going to add to it plus equals whatever the button dot text is so whatever the text of the button is we are going to add to it so that will automatically generate all these uh, alphabets okay so that looks good so here it is b if i click <laughs> it generates a lot of them but you see the point when we click it generates it's not very accurate at this point but yeah it gives us a lot of these now what we can do is we can use a timer to actually find out how many times we clicked uh, is it single time or double time or the easiest way to do it just sleep uh, let's say 0 0.1 or 0 0.15 and uh, for sleep we can import it from here from time import sleep so you can say this is the lazy way of doing this but it works hopefully let's see
So here we have it. If I click on B, there you go. Single, single entry. G, H, B, B again, V, C, there you go. So it works, it works good. So that is, yeah, so we have the overall picture. It might be a little bit higher. It's really annoying <laughs> to see. It's a little bit higher. Maybe we can push it down, the height, the text height. Uh, maybe 30. Anyways, so as I was saying, this is the main idea of how you can do this. Now, the next steps, what we are going to do, they are just for, you can say, adding cherry on the top. They are not compulsory, but they can make the project a little bit better. So we need to go closer. There you go. N, B, V. Okay, B was twice. Uh, you can add uh, a little bit more delay if you see that it's repeating a lot, but I don't see it a lot. This is just maybe by mistake. Uh, okay, so this is good now. Now, one thing that we can do is we can make this part transparent. So uh, instead of having complete, uh, what do you call it, solid rectangles, we can have it uh, with transparency. Now, it might be something that you're looking for. It might be good. It might be bad because, uh, for example, if you make it transparent, you cannot see what is at the back. So at the back, uh, if, if it is white right now, it is white, you won't be able to see these characters. It will be very hard. The black side, it will be fine, but here on this side, it will not be. It will be tough to see what is happening. But there is an option. Uh, actually, I didn't know how to do this. And what I did was I went online and I checked for some code. I was hoping that there is a easy method of doing this, but as it turns out, there is not. So I found this answer on Stack Overflow and um, I, I read through the first one, it wasn't that good, um, but it does the job, but it's not that good. The second one is really good. So it uses rectangles and circles, and then basically you are creating a mask and then you are using added weight um, function to put it together. Now, this is not the most efficient way to do it, but it works. So what we can do is we can write it uh, with this example and it can actually help us with the transparency as well so what i did was i wrote down uh, this draw function again so if you want to use this keep using this but if you want to do it with a transparent background then let me show you how that is done so i wrote it on a separate page here and this is basically uh, the draw all function uh, it uses image and button list again, but now it requires NumPy and CVZone package as well. So I added a little bit of um, what do you call fanciness as well. So, so we will write here import NumPy as NP and uh, import CVZone. So if we remove this draw all and then we keep this one, that should give us the transparency. So this is the code that uh, I copied from Stack Overflow. And uh, then this part is what we are using over here. But I added the CV zone corner rectangle, which looks a little bit good. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. So you can go through this if you want. Let's see what happens. The rest of it, oh, why is there an error? Uh, all, all, okay. <laughs> My bad. So it should be, I think we should keep it lower, lower case here as well. Let's keep it lower case. There you go. Okay, let's run it and see what happens. And there you go. So now you can see there is a transparency involved. And whenever we go, it makes it a little bit bigger. And then if we click, does it click properly? There you go. There you go. So now it is with the transparency. And as I mentioned, you see the white part, it doesn't look very nice. If I go to the black part, then yes, uh, it is good. But with the white, not so much. Uh, it's very hard to see. 
So you can you can play with the transparency value as well. Here you have the alpha value. You can play with that, but in my experience, it wasn't that good. So you might want to use this, you might not want to use this. So for now, uh, let's just keep the old one so that we are able to draw with um, without the transparency because it's really clear what is happening. Now, one more thing that we can do is to really utilize it in the real world applications, we need to simulate our keyboard. Okay, so now it's good. So we need to simulate the keyboard and not only on the uh, OpenCV window, we want to do it on uh, some software, on some website, right? So we need to simulate that. So in order to run this, we need to import a new library. We need to go to our interpreter and here we are going to write, what was the name? Pi input. Yeah, so Pi input. Uh, this is the library that helps us in detecting the uh, or simulating the key press. So what we have to do is we have to write here from uh, pi inputs dot keyboard keyboard we are going to import key uh, and controller uh, we don't need uh, controller actually or we don't need the key controller only controller so that's the idea and then we are going to write here that keyboard uh, is equals to our controller and that is pretty much it so if we go down we will go to the place where we have to press it so where we click it and here we are simply going to write uh, keyboard dot press and we are going to press in which button the button text that's it so normally you would write here a uh, a or b or c whatever you want to press so instead of that, we will just write button text and that should work. So I'm going to open up notepad to test this out. So let's make it really big. Yeah, I think that's the maximum it can go. So let's put this here and let's open it here. So if I go here and do for the B, there you go. B, but didn't, didn't, didn't write here. <laughs> okay, we need to check here again. Okay. So if I go up here to G, there you go, it writes G, F, D, D, come on D. Uh, it needs to be close. What is happening? Yeah, there you go. So you need to play around with these values to make it work properly. Again, as I mentioned, you might want to give it a range to make it work more efficiently and more easy. And then you can add a space bar, you can add a caps lock, you can add, uh, what are the other keys? Command, option, uh, for Mac maybe. So all these things you can do uh, one step at a time. Uh, don't rush into everything at the same time. Just do one bit at a time. Like for example, if you started with the transparency, it will be very hard to achieve because it is a little bit complicated. And uh, try to do the basic things first and then move on to the complicated part. So this way, you keep on track and then you keep adding uh, more uh, what do you call features or more ideas you enhance them and make it a little bit better so yeah i think this is pretty much it we are good to go do we need to do anything else um i believe that is good enough yeah, I'm going to keep this code here in case you want to use it. And uh, the rest of it is pretty good. Oh yeah, there's one more thing. Uh, you can use a corner rectangle here here as well. So I, I like to use this. Um, let's see, let's put it in the draw all. And we are going to remove that. Let's go a little bit back and this will be image so hopefully the size will be fine instead of button position we already have that we can write x and y here and then width and height but anyways yeah there you go so i like this part uh, where it gives it an edge 
um, it looks fancier to me. You know? And yeah, you can also do that. Uh, it becomes a little bit bigger in size whenever you are hovering over it. So that will give it a better look as well. So yeah, uh, if you go here for the rectangle, uh, you can do it here, this one. So this is the rectangle. So this is the starting position, which is your X and Y. So you can reduce the X a little bit. So X minus 10, then uh, Y minus 10, and then here plus 10, and then plus 10. So this will increase the size of it a little bit uh, by 10 pixels on each side. So let's see how that looks like. Yeah, there you go. So now when we go on top of it, it becomes a little bit bigger. It's a little too big, to be honest. Uh, maybe we can do five instead of uh, 10. And maybe we should give it a value and in, uh, integer so that we can we don't have to do it manually again and again. But again, uh, all these things, these are small, small things that you can work on and you can enhance this program. The, uh, the, the idea is that you understand the basic concepts so that you can go from there. Yeah, there you go. So this, mu this is much better. Becomes a little bit bigger and it looks nice. There you go. So uh, I hope uh, you have learned something new and we are pretty much done with this session uh, if you like the video give it a thumbs up don't forget to check out our courses on computer vision zone we have a lot of free content we have over 150 tutorials projects and even courses as well so do check those out and uh, if you like this video give it a thumbs up share it with your friends create these exciting projects and share them on our facebook group and discord channel i would love to see what you come up with and this is it. And also, one more thing. In the comments, do share your suggestions of new projects. I will be happy to build your ideas and uh, see them coming to life. Okay, so this is it for today. I hope you have learned something new. And I will see you in the next one.